Yeah, anything that is happening now is important. So if you can relate any part of any curriculum to something that is happening in real time, in the real environment, in the real world, then that is definitely the right way to go. Um, my thoughts about the topic relate to my experience with it, which is I got Shakespeare at school when I was 15 and 16. And it was way over my head, right? The, the, the characters, the context, the history, the situations. Um, now, if you've got a class of 30 students, first of all, there's a small group of them interested in literature. Well, let's, there's a small group of them interested in, say, culturally orientated historical literature. <laughs> and mm. of this small group, maybe a small group within the small group might appreciate Shakespeare. Um, the average, but what I remember was being 15, 16 and being told, this is Shakespeare, this is important. Um, like all I could, all I could think about was football and girls, right? <laughs> I really, I really didn't see the importance of this old man with a beard um, who wrote things 300 years ago. Um, I didn't see mm -hmm. how, how this was important for me in my life because I just had, because um, I, I had my interests at school, I had my sports, um, I had my friends, um, I had maybe some computer games, I had tests to do, I had to think about my future a little bit, and, whoa, that's a strange noise in the background. What's that? Yeah, well, there are base topics that always have value. Love is one of those topics. We all experience love. We all experience hate. We all experience power. We all experience authority. We all experience influence. So um, that's why these the, these subjects are, to, to intellectual people, these subjects are eternal. You know, and, and mm -hmm. Shakespeare's plays were not original. Shakespeare just copied Greek plays. Mm -hmm. So, and the Greek plays were not original. They just copied plays written before that period of time. So, mm -hmm. um, and obviously the masters copied and improved and gave cultural context to things. But there's like, there's very little written today that has not been written before the same way there was very little written 300, 400 years ago that wasn't written before. It's just the context is moved into a place or a position where people understand uh, the the, uh, the situation better. You know, what do students relate to? Teachers, home, family, conflicts, as, as we mentioned, the subjects of power, authority, love, hate, influence, um, rules, following rules, the right thing to do, morality, religion. Um, these, these topics are ever present. Um, my, my fear when people study Shakespeare is the context is so far away, like it's set 300 years ago plus, and, it, and that it seems so far away from anything important that anyone is, is doing right now that it's very hard to make interesting. I'm living mm -hmm. in Macbeth territory right now. Like, uh, the, Macbeth was crowned as king. Theoretically, Macbeth was crowned as king about 10 kilometers from here, mm -hmm. where I am right now. Yeah. The mm -hmm. castles, uh, Cawdor Castle, Cawdor, Glamis, uh, the other major castles, they're all... Um, Huntley Castle, they're, they're all within about 30, 40 miles of where I am right now. This is Macbeth country. So I should just got to add that to the mix mm -hmm. of things. That makes Macbeth interesting to me mm -hmm. because I'm living in that area. If you've got mm -hmm. a group of school kids in Germany studying some <laughs> some guy or as the English would say, some, some geezer, some 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 cool guy living 300 years ago right uh, the context is kind of 
lost mm. a, a little bit. And um, but if you can, like the top, it, it sounds really interesting if you approach it from the perspective of, you know, do how how do boys and girls fall in love, right? You know, and mm -hmm. what happens after they fall in love? They stay together, or they don't. They fall out of love. And why mm -hmm. do they fall out of love? And what happens if A loves B, but B doesn't love A? Yeah, and what are the kinds of reasons that people get together? You know, the, uh, and, and this is going to affect students in their own personal lives in the future as well, because you can only have a relationship with somebody that you're in the same place as, basically. I think we like things because we relate to them because we have some experience of those things. Maybe. I think that in general, we can only understand things that we have experienced. Like, like if, I, if I try to describe to you what it's like to be in space, for example, I don't think it works because I haven't been in space and you haven't been in space and it's, it's no. really abstract. So the things that we relate to um, are very often the things that we have direct experience of. That's why a lot of young people like um, really sort of dark, depressing music because they, f they feel trapped in a dark, depressing kind of place where they don't have any... Yeah. Problem. It's so much deeper as well because it's you know, a fundamental philosophical question. It's, what am I? The verb to be is one of the three foundational verbs, be, do, and have, of the English language. And it, it implies existence, as you said, you know, to, to exist or to not exist. To, um, but it, it's also on a whole cultural perspective as well. It's not just about individuals, but it's about as a human society, a human race. What, what makes us... What makes us individual? What makes us who we are? Why, why do we do? Why do we do what we do? And of course, that's the influence of culture and friends and the people around about us. And um, it's such a rich topic. Yeah. Know, and it can go in many directions. So I think it's very good to explore Shakespeare from uh, personal elements that young people can relate to, such as that. It's a very good idea. Um, and it's also very good it's v it's a very good idea not to look at the whole works of, a of any part of Shakespeare because it's just so no. Yeah, it's fun when the context is right and people understand what is happening um, yeah that obviously the students have their problems with their relationships with their parents and their friends uh, that they have to solve and Students get a lot of information, some of which will be true and some of which will not be true, and they have to develop the skill of discernment to understand what is actually correct. Because there's, you know, in there is in media um, a lot of information which is not correct, mm -hmm. and we we need to under understand that. Um, Things have not changed since ancient times. <laughs> yeah, there's, uh, there was propaganda, and there will still be propaganda. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I think that Shakespeare is a very deep subject, and I think that in schools we need to touch on it lightly and carefully. Uh, for example, me myself, I have a problem reading Shakespeare because. The language is not modern English; it's old English, and I know. and also I have a problem mainly because of the context, because it references things happening at that period of time. You know, if it maybe has indirect references to Spanish kings or Spanish ships, or the idea that it's not difficult. I, I don't know. It depends how you explain it to who you explain it to because the scholars have studied and written about this for a long period of time. So it is 
both as easy and as complicated as you want it to be. So I, I don't I, I I don't subscribe to the idea that it's just easy. It's more it's more complicated in, in, in my opinion than that. Um, the the ideas may be simple, but the context is there, there's always more things happening. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, let's just say there are different levels to understanding. Let's say everyone can understand it on one level, but there's more levels to it. So um, the play itself is more complex, the characters are more complex, and the individuals who need to understand it are also complicated. I don't, I don't understand the fact that somebody loves somebody so they kill their partner. That's not love. Mm, I don't think at any point in time in history it was normal to kill your lover's lover. Perhaps it happened in extreme situations in literature, but I'm not sure that it happened so much in real life. I I I, I don't know, but I I mean we, it it it's it's drama, it's theater, so of course it's 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 theater, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's an extreme situation. Yeah, it's also the saddest thing as well, because. It's sort of saying there's no escape for her. There's no way out. Because that's her escape. Her escape but from the problem is to get married. You can imagine that the king was not unhappy that these things happened. I mean, the, a real boss never does his own dirty work, right? They always get someone else to do it for them. Mm. Obviously, there was uh, an agenda to rewrite history. And Shakespeare, whoever he was, because we still don't know who he was, if he was mm. one person or many people, it's not clear. And I have read enough about the topic to believe that Shakespeare was not one person. Um, I believe that Shakespeare was a group of people who, mm -hmm. who collected information together for a number of, of reasons. Um, one of the clearest pieces of evidence that Shakespeare was not one person was that there is, uh, there's four times the amount of vocabulary that an education educated person would know in the works of Shakespeare. So the the idea that it was written by one person is inconsistent with all the language used within it. Um, you would have to be the greatest brain of all time to actually write all of that material with all of that language in it. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, he never really had any visible form of classical education. Thirdly, he was not really famous at the time. And... Um, there is very little that he left behind him after his death as um, as reference to him being an individual person. There, there's very little detail, very little information. Everything is theory or conjecture. It's what people think, but there's very little evidence or facts. Um, and there are lots of good documentaries on it that show that um, he was probably a group of people. Um, in fact, the works of Shakespeare were one of the first collections of the English language. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's a, it's one of the first codifications of the English language. Um, it functions basically as a rather large dictionary or encyclopedia of language. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, if you look at what was happening around that, period of time with in scientific enlightenment and other subjects it all kind of connects together that's a it's, a, it's another interesting topic uh, as well a lot of mystery mysteries are always interesting and history is just one big mystery so it's always interesting to look at to look at those elements um and the um it's also worth pointing out that the 
the theater of the day was the was the soap operas of the day yeah it was uh, what people related to it was the culture it was um it was different from theater today where people just sit and watch it was far more interactive it was if the the, the audience would shout at the actors on the stage it was far more in, in, in interactive and far more uh far more real in real time um yeah also they didn't have uh women acting they had, they had men dressing up as women as well so um it, it's really interesting so mm -hmm. that there's a lot it's a very deep subject to, to go into the, the theater and the drama and the works of shakespeare and it's um it, it's nice to give students a little taste that they can understand Mm -hmm. of, of the topic um, mm -hmm. um, I would um, I would show them the, like the, the short YouTube videos the the, the cliff notes videos and uh, give them some context or some background um, I'm not sure how much they will get out of reading a dialogue but uh, you have to do something and why not that um, and there's and there's a lot you can get out of dialogues. There's a lot of language there. You can put characters into different contexts. You can uh, talk about whether or not it's it's something that individual people would actually say. Uh, is it a real conversation? Um, is it something that they can relate to? They're, they're, yeah, for sure. It's a it's a great topic. Um, I think that the aim is to spark the student's interest so that they so that they want to come back at some point in the future and look at yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. It, if it catches us at the right moment, at the right time, then it stays with us, I think. Um, and Shakespeare was always presented to me at the wrong time I think in the past I, I appreciate it now and I respect it now but I didn't have much time for it before I was 30 years old mm -hmm. and it's something that something where the more experience you have in life the more you can relate to it mm -hmm. so that's a problem with presenting it to young people mm -hmm. because they, they don't have a lot of the experience necessary to to understand what is happening um, it's it, it's hard uh, they also get bombarded with so much modern media mm -hmm. that, that the past almost doesn't seem relevant because the because mm. everything is new 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 and you can go home and turn on the television and have 50 television channels all with different things on it and you can get you can choose exactly what you want um, if you can find anything interesting on television, that is, and uh, and you can watch that. Um, it, it it's it's hard to keep the topic relevant. Um, and I know that modern films have been made, and they they help with that a little bit. Um, so maybe maybe that's another way to to introduce the topic. For for Hamlet. It's it's also worth not not for the class, but uh, for the for the person presenting the information, either you or other teachers, to uh, look at the, the film Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. I don't know if you know that film. Do you know? Okay, so uh, it was originally a play by Tom Stoppard, and it is a, it's a play based on the film Hamlet, but it's like the backstory with two characters from Hamlet and all the scenes that you don't see. So it's what's happening when all the characters are off stage, basically. And it was made into a film. Um, let me... Um, so the film is uh, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. It was made in 1990. It's a comedy drama directed by Tom Stoppard, who wrote the original play. 
and it has uh, two well-known actors, Gary Oldman and Tim Roth, play the main characters. And in Hamlet, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are two of the king's messengers. And it tells the story of the messengers, but it's in a very artistic, uh, comedic, intellectual way. And it's very, very, very well filmed. And um, it gives a lot of context to Hamlet's problems and the problems of other characters in the film. And mm -hmm. uh, um, it's a better introduction to Hamlet than actually Hamlet is, I think, because Hamlet mm -hmm. is such a complex topic. And uh, also, if you're into theater and drama and language, like I am, then um, it's considered one of the classic films because it, it it's done in a theatrical style and it references a lot of cinematic technique and a lot of theater and stage technique and a lot of uh, elements of drama as well. And um, it's uh, it's just a nice it's just a nice film. So um, and for people who don't want to go through Hamlet again because they're tired of the story and they know so much about it, it's 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 a very interesting film because you mm -hmm. get all the information that you know about Hamlet and you get all this other perspective behind the scenes mm -hmm. with the characters. So um, so I recommend that. Um, uh, more about Shakespeare. I don't know. Really, I, I, um, I don't really know. Um, I did write an article years ago collecting data about Shakespeare and the theories and conspiracies around his his life. Um, 